Oh yeah! Oh my god! Oh yeah! Daddy Kozeman is smiling like a fool! Like a goddamn fool! And you know why? It's because I, in my fictional speculative evolution, paleo art, I actually goddamn predicted a new discovery that was made today and the recording is being made on the 17th of August 2023. This, by the way, is also the anniversary of an awful earthquake that Turkey experienced. So I would never think I would be this happy on the 17th of August in my life. But man, how times changed. Okay, so if you're new to this channel, please know that I'm an eccentric guy involved with paleontology, art, speculative evolution and many other weird things besides. So before we start, please consider supporting me on patreon.com. Also, you can get merchandise or if you're charitable, you can buy me a coffee. The links are all below. Now, let's get down to business. Yesterday, that is to say on the 16th of August 2023, the discovery of a new creature was announced and this was called Veneto Raptor Gassenae and apparently it was a lagarpetit, that is to say a, like an active, jumpy, almost rabbit, crocodile-like thing and it was co-adjacent to the ancestry of both pterosaurs, these are the flying, reptile, every, flying reptiles everybody knows, and also dinosaur lineages alike. And now let's just take a look at the skull. It's got a very interesting skull. It's got these teeth that are kind of like buck teeted and large up front, but also small and almost herbivorous like below. It's got a little beak here and a little forebeak below. So very interesting skull morphology. The way they describe this is, well, the teeth are a bit sus to be honest, because they don't show up on the actual recovered fragments of the skull. I think they just went and went and went and became creative with it. I don't know, but the hands are interesting. The last digits are the longest, apparently. By the way, the brown bones are the ones they had discovered. So they did recover the tips of the beaks. They did recover the back of the skull a bit. These are the tips of the beaks. I don't get how they came up with these teeth. But when I saw this image, and it was pointed to me by my friend Lori Chayan, so hi Lori, and thanks for prompting this entire video. Well, I just remember, fuck, I drew this thing more than six years ago. Here's my drawing, not of Veneto Raptor, but basically I was just bored one day, and I was studying the skulls of various ancestral forms such as theropods, sauropods, we look at them all in detail. I look at all these skulls and came up with a hypothetical total ancestor. And I, I, I looked at basically my influence of these things and kind of combined them together and even gave it a little beak just like these guys and reconstructed it. It's uncanny how similar to this creature my speculative paleo art is. I mean, I'm just giddy just looking at it. The only difference is mine has five fingers and this has four fingers. There is a fifth finger, apparently, but it's just so tiny. But anyways, unbelievable. So what I did was, around 2017, it was kind of becoming clear and there was a kind of theory called the Ornithoskeleda theory, which suggested that the early Ornithischians and theropods were actually closer related to each other than the sauropods. And, I don't know, maybe pterosaurs also fit somewhere in this scheme too. But I noticed how this, like, strange two-form teeth pattern was common with pterosaurs, also with ornithischians, and also even, like, pteropod-adjacent things like herorosaurus here. So I just studied the skulls of early pteropods, such as Aeoraptor. I looked at Herorosaurus, one of the largest early meat-eating dinosaur kind of things. Some people think this is an early theropod. Others think this is an early meat-eating relative of the sauropods. I also looked at the skulls of early sauropods. Once again, you see like the staggered teeth pattern. Like They're like a bit long and almost predatory up top, but then they get like all plant-eatery as you move further back. I looked at the skull of this related thing called Pampodromius, 
These were basically dinosaur adjacent creatures with long necks and imagine like a giraffe crossed with no imagine a gazelle crossed with a reptile and a crocodile. But most interestingly they had little beak tips, just like this Venetoraptor character here. So that's interesting. And then I looked at the uh, Heterodontosaurus, probably an early Ornithischian, but this thing was already so derived that it could have been almost anything. But once again, you have the pro beak here. You got the sharp teeth up front here. The rear teeth have become like completely plant eatery. Now, we don't know if Heterodontosaurus was an early Ornithischian or, or if it was like an Ornithischian adjacent group. But that's what I was getting at. At this base level, they're all kind of moot. Even if you look at pterosaurs, you have this double formed teeth pattern and they all look like they derived from something quite similar. So I just went and drew this thing. I looked at all the skulls we just saw. I fucking made up my skull. And man, did it work like a motherfucker. Look at this. And look at um, Venetoraptor. Look at my artwork. Look at Venetoraptor. God damn, I feel so giddy. In 2017, I almost prophetically guessed this thing that was discovered in 2023. You could pass this off as Venetoraptor art and nobody would bat an eyelid. Ooh, god damn. It feels good to be right. I'm gonna say I told you so, but let's not get haughty. Of course, this just shows that informed speculation is a very useful tool in paleo art. And when you're drawing things, one picture is worth more than a hundred words in a scientific paper. And I wasn't the first person to do something like this. In this one book which I edited, it was called All Your Yesterdays. We had submissions from many friends and one of them was Andrea Gassler. And back in those days, remember this was in 2014, back in those days there, were this, there was this lineage of like long-fingered small theropods called Scansoriopterygids. And Andrea Gassler used his skills of imagination and science and art to create with, uh, his version of this like skin-winged gliding and flying scansoriopterygid and lo and behold e a few years later something like this was actually discovered the famous yi ki the flying bat-winged dinosaur so this happened before also my good friend john messaros in for all your yesterdays made this illustration of a filter feeding relative of Anomalocaris. Now that's a very early Cambrian era strange sort of, well, arthropod-like creature. And lo and behold, something like this was discovered a few years later as Tamisiocaris. And the researchers even used John Messaro's fictional name for this, Seticaris, in, in their publication of this an animal. So that's that everyone, never underestimate the powers of imagination, science and art, they are very useful tools in paleo sciences and I think we're going to see more of these things. The only trick to this art is just knowing that you're speculating stuff. So you shouldn't be cocky, you should just say this is speculation but here it is and don't be afraid to draw, draw, draw. Once again. If you watch this far, I want you to comment. You were so damn right, Daddy Kozman. I just want those comments so together we can beat the algorithm. Just type it up. You were so damn right, Daddy Kozman. Also, if you like my work, support me on Patreon.com. The links are below. And as always, have a nice day. Goodbye and keep on speculating. Bye.